Hello there! In this tutorial I'm going to show you how I created the CD scene in Maya using Arnold. We'll be shading and creating textures for the model. Let's go to Maya and start looking at the scene setup. So this is the scene we have. You can see how I organized everything in the outliner. The first object is just a basic plane that will be our wood table. Then we have two lights with the exposure set to around 12 and slightly different color temperatures. I also added a Skydome light with a HDR image connected and since we will have highly reflective objects you should set the Skydome light resolution to a high number otherwise you will get blurry and pixelated reflections. And finally we have a shot camera that will be used to render our final image. Let's unhide the CD master group and have a look at the geometry. As you can see I have modeled in a way to, so that I can add subdivisions at render time or by smooth mesh preview. So in the attribute editor under the Arnold tab of the shape node you can see I have set two subdivisions. In the case of the CD, since we're going to add an isotropic reflections we need to enable smooth tangents, otherwise we might get a faceting effect, where we can see the individual faces of the geometry. Here I'm showing you the CDK's different parts, where I also modeled for a high poly workflow. All the objects have render time subdivisions. Ok, let's set up the workspace to do some shading and rendering. Selecting everything and applying the default Lambert so we can start from scratch. Let me reduce the render quality and the resolution and do a render of the shot camera. I added two imagers, one denoiser, the optics denoiser and also some lens effects. Ok, let me hide some parts and start with the black plastic material for the CD base. Assign a standard surface to the selected geometry and let me go back to the final mater material so I can select the right color for the base. Unhide the lid and as you can see I have the default UVs since I am not going to texture this part. Create another standard surface for the leads and in the shape attributes make sure you have opaque turned off since this is going to be a transmissive material. The only thing we need to do for this material is to increase the transmission weight to 1 and set the roughness to 0. Ok, let's have a look at the wood material. It's a standard surface, as always, with the diffuse, normal and roughness maps downloaded from the internet. I just added a color correction node to add a bit of contrast to the diffuse map. Other than that, it's a pretty basic setup. Right, now we're going to do the material setup for the CD itself. For the inner part, make sure the opaque option is disabled and assign the same material we used for the lid. Now the main part of the CD will need to have some sort of UVs in this case a basic planar projection from the Y axis will do. So we need to create that characteristic rainbow effect for the CD. If you follow the Arnold render 
YouTube channel, you should be familiar with the approach. I am just going to change it a little bit to serve better my scene. Create a new Arnold material and assign it to the CD. Let's set the base color to red, metalness to 1. And in this case I am using a roughness of around 0.3. Let's also increase the anisotropy to 1. Now we'll create a ramp for the circular anisotropic effect. In this case I am going to use a ramp float. If we connect the ramp to the specular rotation attribute of the Arnold material, we should start to see some sort of result. Creating now a AI UV transform to control the position of the ramp, this node is similar to the Maya's default place to detecture. It enables you to transform the input of a texture or procedural node. Connect the out value of the ramp to the pass-through R, G and B of the UV transform node. Then just select one of the out color values, in this case I use the red channel, and connect to the specular rotation attribute. If I start to change the rotation value in the UV transform, you can, start, you can start to see some effect on the render. We just need to make sure we set the ramp to radial. Now let's duplicate the shading network. and change the second material to green. Duplicate once again and this time set the base color to blue. We will, we will need these three different colors to create the rainbow effect on the CD. Creating a layer shader and enabling the second and third layers. Now just drag the red, green and blue shaders to the layer shader input slots. Let's assign the layer shader to the CD and, and start to do some test renders. We need to mix the materials a little bit, in this case I changed the mix of each one to 0.5. Now we also need to affect the rotation of each ramp so we can have the rainbow effect. In this case I am going to copy the mix values from the original shader so I can have a more ne neutral effect. Also copying the original values for the rotation. So this is the final rainbow effect, but we are still going to layer some effects on top. Ok, this is the reference I have for the CD, and to create the textures we will need to create an UV snapshot. Select the CD geometry, open the UV editor, and under image choose UV snapshot. I'm going to use a PNG file and a resolution of 2K. Now in Photoshop let's create a fill layer so we can see things better and also change the color of the UVs to red with the blending options. Drag the reference image to the main Photoshop file and align it with the transform tool. Let's now create the text for the CD-ROM logo and the megabytes. I was looking for a similar font in Photoshop but couldn't find any. 
so I extracted part of the image to search online. Just desaturate the image and adjust the levels to help the online algorithm find a similar font we can use. We're going to use the What the Font online service from My Fonts. Just upload the image and find a similar font. Open the font in, the, in a new tab and enter the text we will need. Let's increase the font size. In this case I was going between two different fonts and after I chose the right one I just did a print screen since this is for educational purpose. I'm not going to buy the font. Now just paste and cut the resulting image and man manipulate it to fit the design. Do the same for the 700 megabytes part. Here I'm opening the final Photoshop file, where I have the logos from Sony and compact disc added. We also have the handwritten text that we'll have a look in a second. This is pretty basic Photoshop manipulation, feel free to skip this part. But in case you don't know how to do it, I'm going to show you how I created the circular details we will need to create a mask. Let's use the ellipse tool to create the circles. Just drag holding shift and make sure it's in the center. You can drag some guides to help you with the positioning of the shapes. For the outer edge shape, just use the ellipse tool again. Scale it, passing the outer UVs. Duplicate the shape and scale it down to remove the middle part. Just like a boolean in Maya. Control click on the circle shape layer, the biggest one. And Control alt click on the smaller one to create the desired shape of the outer edge of the city. Now with the resulting selection, just create a new solid color and it should apply the selection to a mask. It's worth mentioning that I have a color overlay in the logos group set to white, since I'm going to use this as a mask. Just remove the UVs overlay and the background and finally export it as a PNG file. Now in Maya, let me have a look on how I created it before, so we can replicate it. Right, create a new standard shader. And give it some color, set metalness to 1 and roughness to around 0.25. Creating now a, a new layer shader to combine the rainbow shader with the logos. Let's drag the rainbow shader to the new layer shader, enable the second layer and drag the newly created material for the middle part of the CD. In this case I am noticing that I need the logos shaders on top. So let's come back to the layer shader, break the connection and reconnect the, in the correct order. Ok, creating a file node to use as a mask for our layer shader. Just load the first image we exported from Photoshop with the logos and the circular parts. Now connect the out color R of the file node to the mix 2 of the layer shader. If we do a render you can now see the effect we are going after. We just need to create the unwritten text to layer on top to finish it off. 
In Photoshop I am showing you the final handwritten text with some effects you can see in the reference image with slight ink effects and some parts masked with a brush on a low opacity. For the font I just went with I just went to thefont.com and searched for calligraphy fonts and found one similar to the reference image. So just create the text and align, and align it according to the design. When you have all the text done, put it all in a group and create a mask for the group. I'm going to use this set of brushes I found online for the fading effect on the text. Create also a color overlay set to white on the text group. Now with the brush tool and controlling the opacity we can start to fade out the text. As soon as you're done you should have a similar result to this one. Just hide, the, just hide the UVs and the background and export it out as a PNG file. Back to Maya, let's create a new material for the text layer. Leave everything to default and set a black color on the base. Now we enable the third layer on the layer shader and drag the material we just created. For the mix let's load the file we exported from Photoshop in a file node and connect the out color R to the mix tree. And if we do a render we should have the final result. Let's unhide everything and do a final render. I am also using a denoiser and some lens effects. For the final image I increased the AA samples and the test resolution. So that's it, the final render image. I hope you learned something new and let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you, bye bye.